Uh, once again, for those of you just joining us, fuck Elon Musk. Welcome back to the show. Um, if you weren't aware of this, I don't know where you've been. Anyway, I really, you know, I'm, I'm getting to the point with, with him that I'm, I, we got to the point with, with the night Trump. I don't want to hear his name anymore. I'm sick to night of him. Can he just go the night way? Knock night off. And the problem is we are going to hear his name again because he is going to run again and probably be the nominee. Uh, and it'll be the worst deja vu you've ever felt. Yeah. Well, anyway, on to other news. <sighs> we have an intro. Let's go. Each week, Captain yeah, Radio to their audience on the worldwide interwebs. Find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here for a little segment. We like to call what's wrong. And uh crazy. Um I'm crazy for feeling so Tara. So lonely. Did you hear about the Mona Lisa? The Mona Lisa got cream pied, Tara. Yeah. The, the Mona Lisa took a cream pie. Did, did you hear about that? I did. There, there was a, a, a... Thank God they have that between, like, better glass than they give the Pope. They, they, it, it, it got... It. She, she, she took a cream pie. Just... Not right. that kind. Yeah, people... I'm doing that because I... Right now, over on YouTube, there are two types of people. Mm -hmm. There's one type of person going... Ah, and there's another type of person going... Why is that funny? What is it? What's funny about a cream pie? And they're Googling it as I'm speaking and horrible things are happening. And I think it's hilarious. But there's a third type of person uh, who didn't wait long enough for you to say that and had to type out the comment. True. So she took a cream pie. Yeah. And then when someone says, yeah, he says that. Well, let me explain it to you. There's that person, too. So here's what happened. Here's the picture. There's what happened today. And this it, it's not just the fact that it happened. It's the fact that it's so fucking incompetent. All right. So a dude in a wheelchair. Oh, I didn't know that part. And a wig. Rolled into and they, they have considerations. That this was really shitty. He was able to conceal the stuff because he was in a wheelchair. And the, 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 the Louvre has considerations if you are disabled and they're not going to say, Hey, are you supposed to be in that chair? Because that's a shitty right. thing to do. Right. Um, the man who appeared to wear a wig and videos, the incident shared on social media, approached the painting in a wheelchair before throwing a piece of cake at the artwork. They're going out of their way to say cream pot to avoid saying cream pie too. <laughs> Bless your heart. CNN. It's not a cake. It's not a cake, honey. Um, Videos of the aftermath show him on foot with a wheelchair nearby. Visitor simulated disability in order to use a wheelchair to approach the work, which is installed in a secure, uh, secure display case. The Louvre. Uh, so the secure display case is while standing near the painting, individual, individual threw a pastry he had hidden in his personal belongings at the Mona Lisa's glass case. So, first of all, all you've done is you've Covered, yeah, the glass that just give the interns more work because it is one of the most important works of art in European history. So they're not going to just leave it out where people can put their grubby fingers on it. But then he it's has better protected than the Pope. They're not fucking around. But then he has to leap up. The man is heard saying in French, think of planet Earth. There are people destroying it while security escorts the man with rose petals scattered on the floor of the museum. I want you, I, if, how does this connect to? Yeah. Did the Mona Lisa do something that I don't know about? Even Banksy is sitting there going, I can't connect these two things. Yeah, like. Are they are they driving the Mona Lisa around in a big old coal rolling truck or something? No. 
They tell oh, and they, they took him for psychiatric evaluation. I don't think he's in. He has any psychiatric problems. I just think they looked at this and goes, "We got to be sure you're not nuts." Yeah, we we got to be sure you don't you're no, don't present a danger to yourself because that was incredibly stupid what you did right there. I think they have a crippling case of I want attentionitis. Yeah, we, we want to see if you have a real problem, and if so, we will get you the help you need for it. Or we want to see if you're a complete imbecile. So we have to tell which one of those it is. <laughs> Cause fucking. And you know what's what the best part is? We don't even know his name. Which I bet he counted on. If normally when people do all this, they get their name right in there. So you yeah. know who all we know is he's a man. Who faked being disabled in a wheelchair. Yeah. That's all we... Good job. Well done. You had a moment. You had this... You did a thing. You had this spark of an idea. Tiny little spark. Not a light bulb. No. (laughs) Just a little spark. And then you fucked it up. You just... you, 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 You... you, you wait, just fucked it up. Uh, well, speaking, like, why not pick? But why not pick a piece of art that at least makes sense? Like, mm-hmm. like Damien Hurst is displaying something somewhere, <laughs> and like that fucker kills sharks for fun. Yeah, like. Leonardo's been dead a long time. He didn't make it to the Industrial Revolution. It's not his fault. You know, it's it's funny. If you think about the art world back in their day, yeah, of course, they've always been had debauchery and shit. But here's Leonardo. He's painting on one hand and he's making like like fucking airplanes on the other. And modern yeah. art is like this weird, decadent, attention seeking shit. Jesus with my poop. Yeah. It's a statement. Yeah, we get it. We get it. Well, moving right along, we have even more. <sighs> what would be the worst place to attempt to steal a car, Tara? Let's, let's see, see what you say on this. Police station parking lot? Boop, boop, ba doo! Boop, Did I get it? Did I win my feud? Boop, boop, ba doo! Yeah, it's it's like survey says. Is Steve Harvey proud of me right now? <laughs> uh, Emporium man charged after trying to steal truck helicopter at barracks. Cameron County, Pennsylvania. State police say an Emporium man is facing multiple felonies after authorities say he attempted to steal a vehicle and then a helicopter from the Emporium Barracks. Troopers say on uh, Thursday morning, authorities were dispatched at the barracks report that the man, identified as 39-year-old Michael Roberto, uh, was attempting to steal a pickup truck from the parking lot. Investigators say Roberto had left the barracks prior to troopers arriving on the scene. At the same time, a helicopter was landing at the barracks, and troopers then witnessed Roberto sprinting toward the aircraft. So, like, stealth, just like, hey, upgrade! <laughs> Authorities say Roberto attempted to access the cockpit of the helicopter, was kept away, kept away by the pilot, who uh, police say had to hold the door shut to prevent Roberto from getting inside. See you. What? They can see you. Yeah. Troopers also noted that Roberto appeared to be intoxicated. Who wants to guess what he was on? It doesn't say, but you know what he was on. Nothing good. It's 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 always it's always meth. It's meth or some meth fucking derivative, but it's always fucking meth. Say GTA is not a LARP a lot, but does that not literally sound like GTA gameplay? Yeah. Trying like to steal you are a car. In the impound lot, trying to steal a car, but then a helicopter lands. So you take your little thing and you're like, oh, that's better. And you turn your little guy 
Like maybe this was a free guy situation. The simulation is glitching. I just of all the don't do math, kids. It's bad for you. Speaking of don't do math. Um <laughs> The, 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 the guy in our next story, I appreciate the fact you can't fault him for his honesty. That I mean, he, he's, got, he's got a little integrity here. I mean, he's caused a fucking catastrophe, but I was smoking my meth pipe. Florida man totals tractor trailer during delivery to Publix shopping center. Ain City, Florida, a tractor-trailer delivery driver is facing possession of methamphetamine after crashing into the back of a public shopping center. Michael Calvo, 51, of Cape Coral, was making a delivery in the back of the shopping center when his tuck, what is tuck, when his truck tore an awning off the building and hit an unoccupied pickup truck. Officers say both vehicles were totaled. When an officer approached Calvo following the crash, he stated, he thought he was being pranked by a television show and did not immediately come out of the 53-foot tractor. So there you are. You have crashed your fucking big rig into somebody's fucking Ford Ranger. And then the cops show up and your thought is, oh, someone's fucking with me. You're not punking me today. Which part did you think was a prank? Really? Like, do you think that the cop was this the part where you hit a bunch of shit <laughs> or the cops? Because there's a direct line of right. causation between the two. You don't just get to run your car into shit, even if it's a regular size car. The cops don't. They, 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 they kind of take notice of that stuff. Yeah. Police say Calvo's They're not OK with that. Uh, police say Calvo's erratic behavior caused commotion in the shopping center after many employees and customers showing up to see what happened. After a few minutes, the officers were able to remove Calvo from the truck and asked if he had fallen asleep, been drinking, or was experiencing a medical emergency. The officer said Calvo's responded by saying, quote, I was smoking my meth pipe. Man, your <laughs> at least make him fucking work for it, dude. Oh, like. Make them have to do the paperwork. Let them have to, like, bring out the CSI motherfuckers and the dogs and check the cab and look for We got residue. No, you just like, oh, I was smoking meth. The more of your time, the more of the cops' time you waste making them do paperwork, the less time they have to shoot people. That's true. You got to make them do the paperwork. What the? F it's just this fucking idiot. The pictures are amazing. Because he just went Maybe through. also just don't smoke meth at work, especially if your work is to drive a truck. That used to be a pickup. Or do anything dangerous. Like, look, uh, don't smoke meth during surgery. Sc scroll, scroll down and look at what happened to the front of that truck. It, like, it split open. Holy Christ. It was, that... It's like the Pomeranian from Blade Trinity. Right! <laughs> Holy God. Um. Okay, so we uh we've got uh, where is this? More Florida. I don't understand this one. Um. There's a whole lot of. We're missing a reel. That that that's my theory on this one. Um, that happens to us a lot. It happens a lot. Suspect offers new age exploration explanation for trespassing at closed Mexican eatery. Trespassing suspect with quote his pants opened and genitals explode exposed not explode uh, explained to Florida police that he was quote doing a chant and cleansing himself spiritually when he was discovered at two fifteen a.m. on the premises of a closed Mexican restaurant. Cops say that Kenneth Gray, 29, tripped the silent alarm after jumping a fence early Monday at the Red Mesa Cantina on St. Petersburg, which is probably the worst commercial for a, for a, for a, a restaurant <laughs> there's ever been. Bring your kids. See the guy with his pants open. When officers arrived at the restaurant, Gray was seated inside a fenced area near the outdoor bar with his pants open and genitals exposed. I keep saying exposed. Exposed. Uh, Gray, seated at right, was detained and subsequently charged with loitering and prowling. 
After being read his rights, Gray reportedly acknowledged trespassing and told police he was, quote, doing a chant and cleansing himself spiritually. At the Red Mesa Cantina. I think I think we can all just breathe a sigh of relief that he didn't, in his altered state, decide he should burn a sage stick. <laughs> Because that, that, that would have had a sad ending for him. Ugh. I, it's just... Daddy, what's in that, on that man's lap? Oh, he just ordered a burrito. <laughs> a, 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 a burrito. <laughs> Looks more like a taquito, Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> Just, I, I don't, I just, where do we get from having your dick out at the Red Mesa Cantina to <laughs> chanting to cleanse yourself? That are like Wiccan practices where you are naked. Right, right. But they usually are not scheduled or practiced at your local eatery. They are not. Great family dining down in Florida. <laughs> okay, this one is one that I I fucking wow. Okay, I don't this is a first. But the thing about That's the thing about firsts on our show is when they happen. It's not good. It's not good. Someone has done something incredible. Yeah. I, I, I have never. Police discover entire house abandoned by movers in the middle of a Louisiana road. Deputies. Wait. From, yes. Not like, oh, oh. Yes. <laughs> I told you. That was my response when I saw this shit. An abandoned house. That's not that interesting. No. On a truck. Deputies from the Iberia Parish Sheriff's Office made one of the odd oddest house calls over the weekend. They had to do it. Mark Menard. Okay. Specifically because the house in question was sitting in the middle of the road in the middle of the night. Deputies responded to uh, Barrett Road in Lauraville uh, regarding an illegal transport of a house. Ipso deputies arrived to find an abandoned truck, trailer, and house blocking the 400 block. So imagine you're, you're coming home from a late shift. Yeah. You've been working at the Circle K. You take you, you try to turn down your road. There's a house there. And for half a second, you have to go. Wait a second. Am I in the right place? Am I tired? <laughs> I live here. I right? shouldn't have had that third Coke <laughs> work. I want the cops like I know that technically cops are supposed to be trained for pretty much anything. Yeah. But illegal transport of a house. <laughs> that can't be a call. They get a lot. Uh, the illegally parked domicile was discovered early Sunday morning around 3.30 a.m. blocking both lanes of a residential road. Investigators say the 46-year-old owner of the home had been told that, quote, proper permits need to be acquired. He and a 30-year-old accomplice were eventually arrested and both were charged with violation of Paris ordinance, obstruction of highway commerce, and criminal damage to property. Here's my question. Okay, so we always say, like, they're going to find you because they know where you live. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, clearly they could find out who the house belonged to. <laughs> but were they inside? Um, where is he? How did you find him? Many mailboxes, road signs, and trees were damaged in the process, hitting power lines and poles, causing 695 customers to be without power for several hours. So what these fuckers were doing is they were cruising down the street, 
the house, which is way too fucking wide, is banging into shit. And everybody, goes, no, it's fine. Keep going. No, it's cool. It's it's fine. Bam! What the fuck was that? Nothing. It's fine. Just keep going. And then presumably when they realized it was not fine, they just left. Now, here's something people are pointing out. I don't know, but I don't think so. I don't think this is a manufactured house. But yeah, like the kind that they do put on a truck and move around. This doesn't look like one of this looks like one that was never meant to be on a truck. Yeah, that is and even those you don't just drive down a little residential block. There's a reason that have you ever seen like a manufactured house that when they put it on the back of a truck and drive it to wherever it's going, that the big ones are in two parts. Yeah. They a car in front of them and a car behind them with the oversized load thing. Right. And when they finally get to where they're going, they put the two parts back together because it's got to go down a highway. Even with a wide load, they can do that wide a fucking load. Right. You'd close the whole highway. Reality breaker. Oh, my God. You just gave me my fucking title this week. Roadhouse. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be. It has to fucking be. Six hundred actually attached to the ground. I can answer this. <clears throat> oh shit! Because the house that my mother grew up in was actually picked up and moved over one lot because they live next to a guy who became the town millionaire writing sci-fi books, and he wanted to expand his property. So he paid my grandmother, and he dug that he he paid for everything. They dug and he bought the the next lot over dug a whole new foundation and literally picked the house up and moved it over and then attached it to the new foundation. So it can be done, but if it's not done really, really well, it can kind of fuck up the structural integrity of your home. You mean like just plopping it on the back of a big rig and crashing it through woods and kind of mailboxes? Like yeah. and You want that done by professionals if you need to move a house over. Yes, what the fuck? Would, I don't know how they thought this will be fine. They went to yeah. so much goddamn effort for this. All the time going, oh, it's going to be a cool. It'll be fine. It will, it'll be fine. What's, what's, it's it's going to be, we got the truck. It's fine. This is like if the guys from Alice's restaurant did math. <laughs> If Arlo Guthrie discovered math, this would be the new verse to Alice's Restaurant. All right. Our, our last story is a little bit different for us, but considering the week we've had, the month we've had, I felt like I wanted to do something a little bit different for the last story. This is not exactly a fucked up story. It's a weird one. But it's when we have, for, for all of our capacity to be weird and frightening, terrifying, and naked ways, we also have the ability to be weird in incredibly glorious ways. Um, have you, Tara, are you familiar with the Josh battle? No. Well, let me tell you a story because this is fun. Every year in Lincoln, Nebraska, hundreds of people named Josh all descend on the town. They fight? And they have a pool noodle fight to discover who gets to be Josh. In my head, I know three guys named Josh. <laughs> um, I don't know why I didn't know about this. Now, the first year it happened, it was kind of, it was, a th it was like, everybody was surprised. This is the second year. And it took a little bit of doing, but with, you know, the pandemic and everything. Um, this was the second year, and people got a little, a little more into it. Several of the competitors this year donned costumes, including masks, animal suits, and football helmets before heading out to Bowling Lake Park. That wasn't enough to dethrone five-year-old Josh Vincent Jr., who defended his title as the number one Josh. The event raised 21000 for Children's Hospital Medical Center in Omaha. Nice. The owners... The owners of Josh Sellers Wine Label pledged to match that amount with a donation of their own. <sighs> a 
I, I just, I love that. And it started out just this weird, sh- th- 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 it was a fucking joke he made on the internet. And now they're raising money for kids. Yeah, he sent out a tweet challenging anyone who shared his name to fight over it. And people, hundreds of people showed up in Lincoln, Nebraska to whap each other in the head with bull- poodle. I love that the five-year-old won, and I wonder if he did it by door dashing a bunch of cheeseburgers on his mom's <laughs> phone and distracting all the other Joshes. I just, I, I, th- this is so Delightful. weird. It's yes, it's it's so weird. It's not fucked up, but I guess I guess the first thing we learned this week is you can use the bizarre, odd craziness that is being a human being for good on occasion. We've oh, also to be naked and aggressive. Yeah. We we we've also learned uh you can't just plop a house on a truck and take it for a ride. I I, I mean apparently you can, but it's a terrible idea. <laughs> Man, when you start smashing mailboxes, guess what? Now you've te- now you've got a federal felony on top of everything. Good job. Good fucking People job. People forget that. Naked. Yeah, d- d- all these those movies see people, kids running by hitting mailboxes with ba- yeah that you, that's a federal felony. That's the feds. You don't fu- you're not allowed to fuck with mailbox. The only mailbox you can fucks with is the mailbox you own. That's it. Yeah. We have learned that um, you cannot cleanse your soul by pulling your dick out at Taco Bell. I can't Please. believe I had to say. You can't cleanse anything at Taco Bell. I, I can't believe I had to say that sentence out loud. You should never pull your dick out at Taco Bell for any reason, even to urinate. Hold it. Yeah, it's it's it's. Good. We've learned that if you get stopped by the police after you've crashed into several things, don't just admit to smoking meth. Make them work for it. They get Hell paid yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. They should have to do the effort. Make them fill out the forms. Right. <laughs> We've learned the, the that not only is it a bad place to, not only is a police department a bad place to steal a truck, it's a terrible place to try to steal a helicopter. That's not a thing you should have to learn. GTA is not a LARP. It and, should just be innate knowledge that occurs to you. And finally, we've learned that if you're attempting to get attention for your cause with a grand public stunt, make it comprehensible. You get one moment for it. Like that. Do you remember the dude threw a fucking shoe at Bush? He is legend. He's on Twitter. He'll talk to you all day. He is a fucking legend. He chose his moment. He did it right. Yeah, this don't just you you smashed some cake on a glass. Yeah. And people have no idea what the fuck was going on. Good job. Good job. Well done. People just don't put in the effort anymore. No, it's very sad. The craftsmanship is gone. It is. All right, folks, uh, they made a statue of the shoe. 